Welcome to Wednesday night online Bible study for July 28th, 2021. Uh, tonight we'll be looking at the title for my witness Bible study is Saving the Southern Kingdom. So we've looked at the Northern Kingdom for several weeks. Now we're looking at the Southern Kingdom in the Old Testament culture. We'll hear from Jehoiada and King Joash. And tonight there will hopefully be a lot from me. I just want to introduce this one small idea before I turn over the video. Um, we need to remember, those of us who live in Western culture, I have to keep reminding myself of this, live in 21st century Western culture, that when we read the Old Testament idea, their faith was considered to be far more corporate than the way we think of faith today. How the nation went was by the leader. They anointed kings. The word we get, Messiah, comes from anointing. It's very important that your leaders at the top of your structure do really wonderful things and are important for all other people because they have dramatic effect upon the religious life and so the writers of Kings and Chronicles reflect upon that. Um, let me just turn it over to the video and let them introduce you to the shocking details of violence that occurred in that period. I murdered a queen, queen of the southern kingdom. Yes, you heard me correctly. Jews had a queen who ruled over us. I was not a prophet, but I was the priest who killed the only queen of the southern kingdom. One morning, I'm in the temple hiding out, as I've done every day of my life, as long as I can remember. Jehoiada, my friend, a teacher, takes me outside in the bright sunlight, and like I typically was allowed, he places a crown on my head, anoints me, proclaims me king. You can imagine my bewilderment. Me, a child who had been hidden in six years in a dusty old building. A king. Jehoiada was a priest who delivered Israel's southern kingdom from the only queen it ever had. King Joash emerged from obscurity to become a true standout among kings of the southern kingdom. The northern and southern kingdom split in the year 930 BC. The first two kings of the southern kingdom were Rehoboam and his son Abijah. They intensified the worship of false gods that was introduced by Solomon. Within a couple of decades under their rule, the people of Israel were dedicated to worshiping false gods. However, for the sake of his promises to David, God allowed the southern kingdom to continue to exist, although it was greatly impoverished, because he allowed the Pharaoh of Egypt to plunder the country. The next two kings of the southern kingdom were Asa and Jehoshaphat. They made progress in ridding the southern kingdom of idols and false gods, but they did not completely eliminate the practice. They were considered good kings for inducing idol worship, and they did enrich the country by defeating many of its enemies, with the country having regained its commitment to God and being on an economic upswing, you would think that the people would stay the course. Enter Jehoram. He was the fifth king of the southern kingdom and reigned only eight years. He did immense damage to the morality of the southern kingdom. He was an evil king. He made the monstrous mistake of marrying the daughter of Ahab, King Ahab, the most evil king of the northern empire. After the marriage, Jehoram reintroduced the worship of false gods and idols to the people of the southern kingdom. This was tragic because the people were on course for their land to be completely cleansed of false gods. And although the Lord continued to let the southern kingdom exist for the sake of David, he allowed a country that David had conquered to revolt, Edom. From that point on, the southern kingdom no longer received tribute from Edom, but was forced to incur the costs of armies to defend against Edom. This was a huge financial blow to the southern kingdom. That blow was compounded when the Lord aroused the fury of other enemies who attacked the southern kingdom completely looted it. They took everything, including all the goods in the palace, all the king's wives and children, except the youngest, Ahaziah. 
Just when the evil king Jehoram thought things could not get worse, the Lord inflicted him with an incurable disease of the bowels. His bowels came out of his body. He died in great pain. The people did not mourn the death of the evil king. Unfortunately, Jehoram had already caused incurable destruction. Ahaziah, Jehoram's youngest son, was the sixth king of the southern kingdom, 22 years old when he became king, young and stupid. But by allying with an evil king of the northern kingdom and making an ill-advised war against Aram, Ahaziah was dead within a year. Here's where the story starts to get exciting. Ahaziah's mother, Athaliah, you need to remember her name, Athaliah. She was the daughter of a king of the northern kingdom, an evil king. She was of the house of Ahab, and Athaliah was exceeded in her wickedness by no woman, except possibly Jezebel. Upon hearing of the death of her son, Athaliah decided to eliminate any competition to the throne of the southern kingdom by murdering all of the relatives of the king. Many of those relatives were her own sons and grandsons. Admittedly, they were mostly evil too, but that was still an extraordinary thing to do because it would have potentially ended the house of David. Believing she had killed off all of her competition, Queen Athaliah ruled the southern kingdom for the next six years. You can't imagine the evil she brought into the land during those six years. Queen Athaliah believed she had killed all her competition. The Bible does not say, but here's one theory about what happened next. Queen Athaliah had a stepdaughter who seemed to be more of a partner than competition. The stepdaughter agreed to marry the main priest and keep him in line. This would eliminate the priests of God as one of the sources of protest against her evil actions. What the queen didn't know was that the stepdaughter and the priest were running a scam on her, a scam on the queen. That's some pretty inside information. So how would I know? I married the stepdaughter. I am the temple's main priest. I am Jehoiada. My wife and I hid one of the queen's grandsons at the temple during her murderous purge. Of course, the queen never came to the temple, so hiding him was simple. When the young boy was seven years old, I could wait no longer. The queen's evil deeds were destroying our country. I called together the commanders of the army and showed them the young prince. I received their commitment to put him on the throne and end the rule of the evil queen. Hidden in the temple were the spears and shields of none other than King David. I armed the commanders and their men and put my plan into motion. I stood the young prince in front of the people, put a crown on his head, a copy of the scriptures in his hands, anointed him king over the southern kingdom. The people shouted for joy, blew trumpets, signifying their happiness in this event. Only a few hundred yards from her palace, Queen Athaliah heard the commotion and came to the temple grounds. She saw the entire scene. She tore her robes. Treason! Treason! She shouted. I'm sure she expected her commanders to protect her and keep her in power. Instead, I ordered them to seize her and drag her away from the sacred temple. They obliged me, of course. Dragged her to the horse's entrance to the palace. They put her to death immediately. That's not the best part. Taking advantage of the people's reaction, I made a covenant with the Lord, the king, and the people. They would rededicate themselves to being the Lord's people. I also had the people rededicate themselves to the young king. Still not the best part. Here's the best part. We smashed the altars and idols to pieces and killed the priests of Baal in front of the altars. This was the beginning of a purge of idols and false gods from the southern kingdom. All of us were delirious with joy. We took the young king to the palace and installed him as king over the southern kingdom. As a priest of the Lord God, I did not think I could be happier. But I was to find out that would depend on the future actions of a seven-year-old king named Joash. Hiding was all I ever knew. I never really knew why, but suddenly to be in the sunlight 
crowned, anointed. Everything was happening so fast, and that was just the start of it. A few minutes later, this old lady appears with guards, interrupting the party and screaming. The commander's around me, they grab her and they take her away. Kill her. I don't find out till later that she was, she was my grandmother. The crowd rushes to a large building nearby and they begin to smash it, smash the building. It's the Temple of Bell and they kill. A man in a white robe came outside to protect it. They killed him. It seemed like only a few minutes longer and I was in the palace being crowned as king. From the shadows of the temple to the throne of the southern kingdom, just a few hours max. What would you have done? Perhaps you would have been wise enough to do what I did. Continue to take the advice and direction of the man I had always trusted, the priest Jehoiada. He is my uncle. I reigned for 40 years, and Jehoiada was my counselor for many of those years. He died at the age of 130 and was buried with the kings in the city of David for the good he had done for Israel, for God, and for the temple. I say all of this because of the ominous verse in the Bible that says, I did what was right in the eyes of the Lord during all of the years of Jehoiada the priest. One century into its existence, I became king of the southern kingdom. During most of that time, the people had worshipped false gods and idols. The temple of the Lord in Jerusalem had become shabby and neglected. I concocted a plan to repair the temple by specifying the use of various offerings and vows to be used solely for that purpose. Unfortunately, I put the priests of the temple in charge of the money. After many years of this going on and the temple not being repaired, I called for a change. After consulting Jehoiada and the other priests, I put the royal secretary in charge of the money expenditures. He paid the workmen directly and the repairs soon got done. The priests had used much of the money to make sacred objects for the temple, not repair the building, so it's a good thing I made the change. Years later, the king of Aram threatened Jerusalem. I had to buy him off by giving him all of the treasures in the temple and palace. Any objects the priests would have made would have been lost anyway. That may just be rationalization on my part, though. I did a good job of slowing the worship of idols, but I was unable to keep people from returning to it. When Jehoiada died, many leaders of the people flocked to me. They convinced me to abandon my devotion to the temple and allow people to worship Asherah poles and idols. It's crazy, but I did. When Jehoiada's son Zechariah came to prophesy against my actions, I did not repent. I allowed the people's anger to get to me, pressure me. I ordered the death of Zechariah, the son of my precious mentor and uncle. He laid there dying, and he called upon the Lord to repay my wickedness. Jesus referenced my despicable actions in a rant against the Jewish leaders of his time. At the end of the year, the army of Aram invaded the southern kingdom. They killed all the leaders of the people and severely wounded me. The last thing I saw was the Arameans carrying off all of our treasures to Damascus. Then my own officials murdered me in my bed. I was a pretty good king in the beginning, but I failed miserably in the end. Why? Probably because I was the same as my son. The Bible described him as, he did right in the eyes of the Lord, but not wholeheartedly. It's a shame, really. Not wholeheartedly. After all I'd been through, all I'd seen, be sure those words are never said about you. Sobering, sobering history of, of the Israelites and the southern kingdom and 
violence and terror and corruption. And it's so easy for us to detach ourselves from that, but I think as the video presents, we share many of those characteristics. In Second Chronicles chapter 25, I'm just going to read the first two verses. This is what he's making reference to at the end of the, the dramatic, dramatic monologue. It reads, um, Amaziah, and I'm not even sure I'm saying that correctly, A-M-A-Z-I-A, I-A-H, -A -A was 25 years old when he became king. He reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Jehoadan. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not wholeheartedly. This is a variation of that recurring theme in Kings and Chronicles that I listen to and I struggle with of how do I do what is right in the eyes of the Lord but then not wholeheartedly? Is that because if we do it for the wrong reasons? We don't really believe it. We've let other things distract us. I mean, I know in many of these cases, it's other things distracting us, but as that dramatic monologue presented with, we wouldn't want us to be spoken of that way. And so how do we keep from being spoken of as, but not wholeheartedly? Don't have a good answer for you. But as you read the text, and maybe as you read through Second Chronicles, and I know in, so I'm looking at my one-year Bible as I'm reading through Second Chronicles currently, while the day I'm recording this, a lot of horrible things that happen that from my 21st century perspective bother me. But we need to remember the original hearers would have heard the words, but not wholeheartedly. How can we in the 21st century, I think coming out of a pandemic, how can we do things right in the eyes of the Lord wholeheartedly? What does that look like? I'm going to leave, that, leave you with that for today. Next week, we will look at uh, the title is A Good King. Uh, it's King Hezekiah and the Prophet Isaiah. So just to be prepared for that. Let me close in prayer because I want to have left you with a difficult question because I'm struggling with that question myself. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you that you are the Almighty One. You are more than we can imagine, more than we could hope for, more than we could even visualize. What we read in our, our Bible studies, we watch in videos of kings and families of violence and destruction. and We don't understand how we could do that. Help us remember that we, though by the grace of God, could make those same mistakes. And help us to find a way to follow you wholeheartedly. To be yours and to trust in you. In Jesus' name, Amen. See you all next. See you all next week. Thank you very much.